So let's think about momentum, and let's start by thinking about momentum in space and not space-time. So classical physics, not relativity. So momentum is defined by this equation. Momentum is abbreviated with P um, for reasons that actually nobody quite is certain of, but um, that's a totally standard uh, letter. So P equals mv, v is velocity, and these are vectors, meaning that the direction matters. We haven't worked much with vectors explicitly um, in this course so far, um, so I'll need to say a little bit about vectors in what follows. So let's start with a picture. So this is space, not space-time, x and y. And we might have an object that's moving through space in some sort of twisty path, who knows. And um, let's, let's think about what velocity is. So let's start there. So a couple ways to picture it. Velocity is defined to be this, so displacement divided by time. Usually we think about distance over time. This just says, all right, now we're going to have to think about this being a vector quantity. And um, let's see, so we could picture the velocity. It's your speed at a particular moment. The direction you're headed, so that would be parallel to this curve. I should mention this object, whatever it is, is heading in this direction. So it's um, tangent to this curve, and the magnitude of this arrow is the speed you're going at at that particular moment. So let's imagine um, zooming in like, to this little region. And let's see what we have. In that region, um, the you know, we zoom in enough, this curve starts to look straight. We would have a dr, which I could break down into an x part and a y part. Um, there would also could also have a z dir direction moving in and out of the uh, paper, or towards and away from the camera. And I'm not going to draw that here because already this is a bad enough drawing. So um, what I want to what I want to uh, say is the following. So we've got a displacement, and you can think of it as a vector, which is really just a list of three smaller displacements. So this says in some time interval, the object moves. How does it move? Well, it moves some amount in the x direction, some amount in the y direction, and some amount in the z direction. And this list of x, y, and z motions all together is a vector, which is why it has this vector hat on it. And then the velocity, we just take the displacement and divide it by the um, time to get the, the velocity, displacement over time, or usually distance over time. And so we would take dx divided by t, dy divided by dt, dz divided by dt. So um, let me write that, um, I guess, like so. So v is dr over dt. Let me run out of room. I may also run out of ink. All sorts of resources appear to be scarce all of a sudden. Okay, so dx, dy, dz, and dx, dy is just vx. How fast you're going in the x direction, this is vy. How fast you're going in the y direction, and this is vz, how fast you're going in the z direction. So then, going back to momentum, we have, well, p equals mv, and we could think about individual parts of this. So, for example, p 
px is m vx py is m vy and for completeness sake my pen will last okay so lots of notation lots of bookkeeping here but let me um summarize by saying the following so we've got an object with a mass m moving through space and its momentum is its mass times its velocity how do we think about velocity in ordinary physics well, it's just displacement divided by uh, displacement divided by time. What's displacement? Well, it's the the step you take, say, from one instant from one instant to the next, from this time instant to that time instant. It's your um, x displacement, y displacement, z displacement. Divide those by the time interval over which that displacement occurs, and you get this bracket that didn't quite fit on the page. And so, we would say this is the x component. This is the y component or y part. This is the z component of velocity. Put that together with mass and you have the object's momentum. So this is the quantity that's conserved in classical physics. The total momentum of a system before and after an interaction stays the same. Momentum is like a, a sort of cosmic accounting principle. All sorts of interactions are possible, but the net momentum change always has to be zero. All right, so this is a quick view of momentum in classical physics and in space. In the next video, we'll look at momentum in special relativity, or we'll start to look at momentum in special relativity in space-time.